I don't need consumables. They disappoint me. Damn girl, me too. My filthy little scarcity mindset. It's not just elixirs I'm saving for the credits, but also early to mid game equipment. What if someone joins who might need it? Freeloading bastard. It's even worse with the Final Fantasy XII license board and Dragon Quest VIII's crafting system. I know that these games are supposed to be balanced around all this, but my gut does not not trust like that, man. Are these things useful late into the game? Will I have to farm enemies? God, no, ew, no thanks. Bad. And if I decide not to engage in the system, will that throw off the game's balance? Would I throw off the game's balance by engaging with it? Stresses me out, no joke. So how am I gonna solve this scarcity mindset in my game? Well, obviously by reworking items and streamlining the equipment process. But with a twist. Oh yeah, rechargeable items. There's still scarcity, so you still have to be smart with your usage, but it's not really a one and done sort of deal. There's an ebb and flow. Floppy, then rigid, then floppy again. But that only solves it. I'm going to eat Paper Mario again and convert its star point system into an item point system. Let me give you the skinny on how this works. You do damage, you charge a meter. Meter gets full, you get a point. You use points to use certain star powers. Or in my game, items. First, I need to remove default items. Instead, in battle, item usage is made into a skill type. You may have seen the item restore all classes. More on that in a little bit. But then, what's the point of money in the game? Does that have to do with a quit? An item pouch creates another branch of progression. You might want to upgrade item capacity, item potency, recharge rate, the types of items that you can find, or maybe even purchase for your roster. It's also one of the only ways to heal. Other than that thing to do with equipment. You want this pouch, okay? You want to explore for upgrades. You want to spend money on other upgrades. Trust. Here's how recharge works. The more successful inputs you get, the more the gauge refills. Simple. But remember those rapid minigames from before where you can get a cake load of inputs? Well, to balance things out, I'm going to use a bit of rubber banding to create diminishing returns. So I tied the restoration variable to the successful input variable, and we should have an amount. But wait a minute, how do we tell how full it is, and how much is filled, and how many IP we have, and where my parents are, and why is the sky red, and why is this thing taking me away somewhere, and what does its weird chance means, and where is everyone, and why aren't I waking up, and why is a giant Homer Simpson in the distance doing this thing, stanky life? Now I'm just gonna do a little programming. Let's add it, and... Sweet. So the console is telling me that the item recharge rate is 2. It's exactly what I wanted. And that's for a minigame with 2 successful possible inputs. Here's what it is with a minigame with 4 successful inputs. You can see the diminishing returns taking effect here. Let's give this puppy one last spin with a multi-target attack and call it a wrap. Stop the recording. Stop the recording. Turn it Let's call it a wrap. Okay, so it turns out that uh, exponents will always surprise you. This number right here may never go above three with the formula that I have. Always getting closer, but never reaching its goal. The ultimate blue balls. I'm gonna have to change that little algorithm. That's more like it. Balance is restored, like what the good guys always want. So this number will be added to some total. And when that total passes a threshold, then you get an item point. Now, I'd rather represent this visually so that it makes more sense. See, you know what that means. Mock up, mock up, mock up. Yeah, babe. Come on, implement, 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 implement. Come on, implement. Oh my god, it's filling. It's filling. Come on, let's go get it, boys. Let's get it there. Let's get it there. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Yeah. Let's use the idea. Let's use the idea. Let's use the idea. Oh, what? You can't see who you're selecting. God damn. All right, hang on. I'll I'll be right back. All right, moment of truth. Why did that happen? All right, it's done. If you have the IP, it will do the thing. And if not, then not. It's an exploration incentive. It uh, it does taxes, I guess. It's important. And do you have something you want to add? No, go on. Share with the class. I just wanted to point out that while I was testing the battle, I had a lot of fun playing my game. Like, a lot. Which is really encouraging to me. If I'm having fun, it's probably a good sign that others will have fun playing the game too, I hope. It means that things are paying off, and that's a really good feeling. Okay, that one half of the scarcity issue has been 
I murdered it. I murdered it. Cold blood. It's done. The other half for equipment, I'm going to solve by streamlining shops and with, get this, a strategy-based class change system. There are eight classes total in my game, two of which are optional. The plan is that you can switch classes mid-battle. Every time you switch, stats don't carry over, meaning current HP and current MP will be set to whatever the current HP or current MP you last had while you were the class that you changed to. Same, get this, with equipment. This is a form of soft healing, right? So essentially you can draw on reserves if there's a class that has a lot of current HP or MP. If you're in a pinch, you can swinch. Now, before I get into what this has to do with solving the equipment scarcity issue, let's get class switching working in engine. Wait, what? Now why is this happening? Even more importantly, why is this happening? Most of the people who viewed the last video ain't even subscribed. What? Drop them likes. Drop them subscribes. Drop a share or two. Drop a comment even. Please, I beg you. So after uninstalling RPG Maker, scrubbing any mention, thought, or memory of it from my computer, reinstalling version 1.01, .01, updating to 1.63, then manually updating NW.js because no way am I going to tolerate the console slowing down every time I want to run an event, I can finally, finally, get some work done. So, after spending some time getting familiar with how class changes work in the engine, I got to work on structuring how to hold the data for the list of available classes and... and their current stats. How does this address this issue with equipment I was talking about earlier? Hold on a dang old sec, okay? RPG Maker has this sweet function that replaces equipment, as well as a function that returns what equipment you already have equipped. So, when you switch classes, you will automatically equip the equipment you last had equipped to that class. Okay, but what happens if you're in battle and you switch classes but you want to switch equipment? The option isn't there currently. You know what? I'm gonna be honest. That's another mode of complexity that I'm going to cut. Remember, first commercial game, that's one. The other is that automatically equipping the next set of equipment isn't as uncommon as you might think. Dairy Queen 1 works that way. It's very black and white when it comes to some equipment being better or worse. There's no equipment management screen. Once you get a piece of equipment, it's automatically equipped. Same with, say it with me, Paper Marion. Each upgrade, in terms of weapons, are better than the last. There's no, this weapon heals you each time you attack with it, but this one deals a lot of damage. There's nothing wrong with that, by any means. But what I'm trying to do is make this more manageable for me. Streamlining the equipment process and, by extension, the in-game shopping experience. So I started on making the equipment for the different classes before I make the switch real, and I'm giving the player all of the armors and four weapons. Okay, take a look at this status window, all right? Drink it in. Three HP, a staff, pot lid, and commoner's garb. When I switch to the mage class, she should have full HP and nothing equipped. When I switch back, she should have 3 HP and the trash equipment she had before. Hallelujah, baby. After importing this tasty little feature into battle and testing it a bunch, I can finally say that the battle system is finally complete. And I mean it this time. Oh, remember that item from earlier? You know, restore all classes? Well, if you use this item, then you restore a portion of HP and MP to all the classes rather than just the class you currently are. And with that, the end of an era. So what's after this? Well, one of my planned features might have to die. See which one's getting killed off in the next episode of Failing Upwards.